Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to the latest Aris Innovator demo series. We're going to be taking a look at our community projects and specifically highlighting one of our latest ones where we're going to show you how to custom model your innovator forms. So I'm David Ewing with the product marketing team and I'm joined by Eli Donahue from our Aris Labs team. Uh, if you were at ACE this year, you, you saw the Labs team up close and personal and uh, hopefully got some swag while you were there. So. A little bit of uh, uh, information about the demo series. We're 30 minutes here today, uh, all demo, no sales pitch. Each month we try to show you different capabilities of Aris Innovator. So this time we're showing you how you can do some cool modeling tricks. Uh, sometimes we'll show products, things like that. So it's a, a way to see a lot of different things in a, in a short time period. And with that, you can go online to aris.com slash demo series and you can get a hold of our, our previous videos that we've shown and also see what's gonna be coming up. Just a quick overview of what you're going to see today. Uh, just a, and stepping back just a little bit, talking about targets. So we're we're trying to show this to existing users that are interested in taking their custom forms, making them a little, look a little different, kind of fit how your your corporate mold might be. Um, you know, you might have different color schemas. You might want to use a lot of our customers do that. They'll actually play with things so that uh, a quality team might use the green segment, and the design team might use the blue segment that way. They, everyone knows what they have to do on a form. Uh, also, you know what users might be interested in understanding how flexible and customizable Innovator is. So, kind of a couple target points there. But as far as what we're going to cover, the ability to bring in and apply external style sheets onto the the Innovator platform, and how you set up and define form fields. So we've got a various different types. How you can override the labels. How you can customize how they're uh, viewed and their styling, and then some specific icon capability and the, some of the specific fields like the, the item info. And I think with that, we're ready to go with the demo. All right, take it away, Eli. All righty. All right, I'm Eli Donahue uh, with Aris Labs, as Dave mentioned. So what we're gonna be taking a look at today is uh, a project that we've got on the Aris Community Project site. So one of the things that our community team's been working really hard on over the last year is revamping our community site and a lot of the platforms that are associated with it. So that includes our community projects. So if you're interested, definitely check out our, our new community site here. It's community.aris.com. And then you can actually access our new community projects page right here from the home page. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that. So here's our, our new community projects page. For those of you who may be familiar with our old community projects page, it looks a bit different, but it has uh, a lot of the same projects. Um, a lot of the projects have been migrated over. Um, some have been migrated over for archive purposes. Uh, if they, for example, some projects have been included into standard product or have been merged into various applications. So, you know, they might have been archived or uh, maybe just aren't supported by the latest browser technology. But some of them are also being updated. Um, and then we've also got some new ones. Um, so we've got a few uh, that have been uh, submitted from the community just since ACE. But what we're going to go ahead and we're going to look for here is we're going to check out the, uh, the Aris Labs project. And we can see here Custom Form CSS. So this is the project that we're going to be taking a look at today. So it's, it's not just CSS, uh, it is a, a mix of CSS, a little bit of CSS, JavaScript, HTML, um, but it's really all about customizing the look and feel of your forms. So a couple of things like Dave mentioned that we're going to be looking at, we're going to look at um, ways to use an external style sheet, um, as well as different ways for updating uh, the overall look of the fields themselves and then some some specific you know class specific icons so whenever you uh, whenever you find a project here on the new community site you're gonna be able to go and find where the code is hosted the Aris Labs projects are all hosted on github so any of the code that you see today I'm just gonna kind of blaze right through it kind of cut and paste and then just kind of show you uh, how it works but if you want to pick through it, take your time, or just import it all and just take it and play with it, you can access it all here. All the source code is here in GitHub. Um, so I've already downloaded this project for the sake of time 
and we're actually going to, instead of importing it, we're going to apply it piece by piece um, so we can look at the different things that we're modifying in the forms today. Yeah, I think maybe Eli made a good note there that he's going to kind of blaze through quite a bit of this. Feel free to uh, create some questions on our on our forums if you want to talk about how to uh, use a specific project or, or download other projects. So that's always there for all of our community members. Please feel free. Absolutely. Uh, and another thing about the projects on GitHub, if you run into issues or if you have questions about a specific project, uh, like, D like Dave mentioned, you can put them in our community forums, which you can get at from the, uh, the homepage, again, our, the community.aris.com. But you can also file an issue, you know, whether you run into a bug, if you, you, know, you run into an issue and you fix a bug, you can submit a pull request. And so that, that'll give us the option to take a look at your fix and say, hey, great, thanks, and merge your fix, and then you become a contributor of the project. Um, so that's one of, the, one of the big motivators behind moving the source code for these projects to a third-party uh, open source hosting site like GitHub, rather than hosting the code through the ARIS website like we did with the previous projects page is now all of the source code is right out there. It's a lot more transparent and it's a lot easier for folks within the community to collaborate with each other without necessarily having a bottleneck to go through ARIS to get that code merged in. So that's a, that's a good point, Dave, mm -hmm. about um, you know comments, questions, issues. You can either hit us up through the community forums or you can do it directly through GitHub. So, here we have uh, our, our SP9 instance pulled up here, and this is just the run-of-the-mill standard out-of-the-box form for part. So as you can see, it looks a bit different than the, uh, the screenshot that we've got here for what we're, what we're hoping to achieve. So this is SP7, so it's in a, a tear-off window. but. You can see what we're gonna what we're gonna do here. One of the things that we're going to do uh, is we're gonna do the uh, the external style sheet, which isn't apparent from looking at this, because uh, you can accomplish all of this keeping your styles within Ares Innovator. That's fine. You can do it with an external style sheet, or you can just do it within you know the uh, the field properties themselves. We're also gonna set up some uh, some kind of field set boxes here. Um, really just for, for style and, and visual grouping. And then also update the look and feel. Um, so this is more of like a, a bootstrap type uh, look and feel uh, for those of you who are, frame, who are familiar with the, the bootstrap framework. And then we'll also set up, uh, we'll tweak the, um, the item info table over here that you see on a lot of the standard ARIS forms. So we're going to change up the way some of the information is displayed. We're going to change up the, the icon that's displayed as well as the, the title. So start taking a look at that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to go to the part form. So I already have it all loaded up here. I'm going to go ahead and lock it so we can edit it. And then so the first thing we're going to do is import our external style sheet. So right now, we're going we're gonna to go to the Form Body tab. And right now, there isn't anything in here. So all of the styles that are loaded on this page are just directly from the default styles that Eris loads with. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep loading the default styles. But after that, we're also going to load our custom styles. So we can overwrite any of the default styles that we need to. So I'm going to create a, uh, a file called mystyles.css, and I'm going to put it in the customer folder in the code tree. Uh, this is kind of a best practice um, as far as, as projects go. If you're going to add custom files, it's a really good idea to put them in the innovator client uh, customer folder. I'll show that here. Um, so this is the, uh, the innovator folder. So this is the, the install instance here. I set it up for ace, but still still using it. Um, so it's under innovator, client, customer. Um, and anytime you have custom images, custom script files, it's always a good idea to put them in here. 
because uh, it kind of collects all of your custom files in one place, makes them easy to find for, for updating and debugging, troubleshooting. And it also makes it good for upgrades because our upgrade team is going to leave this folder alone. Uh, they're not going to accidentally, you know, overwrite anything or leave anything out. Um, if custom files get scattered in with, with some of the core files, sometimes it makes it a little trickier for them to go in and, and weed things out when it comes to uh, service pack upgrades or major version upgrades. So uh, we consider it a best practice to put the extra files in here. So. I've created this file ahead of time. Um, it's just an empty file right now uh, for our CSS. So we're going to add this, these import statements here. And this is really just the same as if you added these import statements at the top of a, a CSS file. So we're going to go ahead and save. We go ahead and uh, close out that part. And uh, we're going to go ahead and clear our cache. Anytime you make uh, code tree changes to um, like HTML files, CSS files, uh, it's a good idea to clear your cache before proceeding and testing out those changes, um, just because sometimes those client side changes can be cached. So we pull up this form, and it looks exactly the same, which is good, because we didn't put anything in that file yet. So we're going to head back and we're going to start putting some stuff into that CSS file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add those field groups that we looked at. Um, so these are just these boxes. Now these aren't the same as if you wanted to add a group box. So if you go to, I believe it's field border, yeah, container name. Um, yeah, so there, there is an option when you're modeling your ARIS forms to create uh, like a group box to group like forms together. You know, you'd do this if you had, say, radio buttons and you wanted to have, you know, several different groups of radio buttons on a form, then you would need to group them together logically. But this is really just uh, to group them visually. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new HTML field. And we're going to go ahead and call this user group. And this is going to form the box around uh, the assigned creator and the designated user and the uh, other fields here. And then inside of that, we're just going to go ahead and put a, uh, an empty span for now. And then this will get styled uh, with our CSS that we're adding. And then we're also going to go and we're going to remove the label so that we don't have that in the way and then we're just going to kind of go put it in the general ballpark and then once our CSS is applied then we'll see the outline and we can kind of tweak things from there. Another thing that we're probably going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, change the Z index since we just added this and we had some pre-existing fields. Uh, we're going to want to set this with like uh, just a random number uh, negative Z index so that it's behind these existing fields that we have here so that way we can move these around because we might need to adjust them once the styles are applied. So we've added that field. Uh, another thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the item info field. We're going to add a class to it so that we can display, um, we can style the, the display of this field. So we're going to go ahead and grab item info. We're going to go and just like we added a, uh, a span with a class to create the user group, we're also going to add a class here called info group. So then we can go ahead and save this. And then we're going to add some CSS for these custom classes that we just created. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add that in our MyStyle CSS. So we're going to go ahead and save that. You can head back here, close that. Um, also, whenever you make changes to an external CSS um, file, you're going to want to close out the form. Um, like I mentioned, you're going to want to clear your cache and then open up the form again to make sure that those changes apply cleanly. All right, so we're going to go ahead and view this. 
All right, so we can see here, all right, so our, our part has that nice gray box around it. That's great. And this, this looks a little funky here. And this is because uh, we're gonna need to do a little adjustment with the, uh, the contents and the positioning of this, this field. So if we go back here and we close out the, the part form and reopen the part form, then we're gonna see it with the, uh, the new CSS applied. And then we can go ahead and we can kind of tweak these fields. So I'll just kind of move that over and scoot these down a little bit so they're inside the box. And if you want these, right now I'm just kind of moving them around, not paying too much attention to the alignment. Uh, you can always turn on the snap. Um, and if you want to be really specific, pixel perfect, you can always select a field, go to field physical, and set the exact X and Y positions. That's what I did for uh, the actual community project uh, because it was just driving me nuts wondering if it was off by a pixel or two. So, um, but for now, this will this will work. Can you see a pixel width, Eli? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's an optical illusion. I would I would set it up and it would say it was the right X and Y, but I don't know. My eyes didn't believe it. <laughs> you look at the screen long enough, and sometimes things move. Yeah. So, so that is, uh, so we took a look at the external CSS. We took a look at setting up our field group styles. Uh, the next thing we're gonna look at is overriding the default label style. So one thing you can do if you wanna override the default label style is you can go to the field label and you can set the font family and you can set the font size and color. But then you're gonna have to go and you're gonna have to do that for each of these. If you want, you could set up some AML and you could do, you know, a, like a batch apply. But again, that's that's kind of a lot of work. And then you're gonna have to do that again and again every time you create a new form. Instead, what we can do is we can set up our external style sheet with a class that has the styling that we want for our labels, and then we can refer to that class in any form that we want, as long as we add that, as long as we reference that external style sheet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a new class called my label to our form here, or to our, uh, our style sheet. save that and then what we're also going to need to do is we're going to need some JavaScript here to clear out the existing class that the default style sheet uses to style the existing label the out-of-the-box labels and then apply our new our new class to each of these so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and create these uh, so we're going to call it my form style, I guess. We're going to go ahead and create this, create this as an onload. And right here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy in the contents of the method that is in the community project. Um, there's kind of a lot of stuff going on in here, um, so we're gonna talk through it, um, but it would take a little while if I, you know, copied it in piece by piece and, you know, with a, with a live demo, I'd be sure to forget something, so. <laughs> so here we, have, uh, here we have the method that's in the community project. So we're gonna start off with some configurable variables. As you can see, there's going to be some images that we're going to reference. Uh, I replaced, if we take a look at this, these aren't the default images that are used um, for the date fields and for the item fields. So usually you would see the three dots here and you see a slightly different, more boxy calendar. So one of the things I did is I went and I borrowed the uh, GitHub icons. So they have the Okta icons um, that are available, they're open source. Uh, so I took those and I put them, put some of them in an SVG file in the customer folder here. Uh, so these will be referenced. So the search one and then the calendar one will be used for buttons. And then these other files here will be used for uh, the class specific icons. 
Um, so if you decide to name them something different, put them somewhere else, then this is configurable here so you don't have to go hunt it down everywhere else. Uh, then there's just some, some helper functions here uh, just for you know replacing attributes, replacing classes, getting at the actual fields. So, so the buttons for an item field, um, and so this is really for an item field and a date field, just because it can be a little bit tricky to hunt down the bits and pieces and it makes it easier to reuse. So for overriding our labels, we're going to go ahead and we're going to find the, the, the uh, elements that have the default label class, and then we're going to go ahead and replace that with our my label class. So we're going to go ahead and save this, and save the part form, and we've already added the my label class to our CSS file. Let's go ahead and close our form. Go back to parts. You know, there, oops, well, we don't want to edit, but that's fine. And you can see things look a little funky here, partly because we're replacing some classes that we haven't defined yet. Um, so this is gonna start to clean up and look a little nicer as we go. Um, but so far, so good. All right, so we addressed our labels. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, take a look at the text and text area fields. So the text and text area fields are a pretty simple approach. Um, it's very similar to the labels. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to replace the class. Uh, it's a little more simple than the, the two-step approach that we're going to talk about for the fields that have a button. Um, but so if we go ahead and we look at the, the method here, then we're just replacing the select and the uh, the field styles and then we're gonna go ahead and add some new styles to our CSS file here just gonna go ahead and grab them all right so these are these are uh, the files these are all um, excuse me these are all the classes that are defined in um, the project style sheet that you can find online. Um, so these are our custom ones. Um, so the label, and then we've got the, the select. Um, and then these are actually jumping ahead here. I accidentally grabbed those. Um, but these are going to style um, the items that we have in the user group box. So go ahead and save that. Clear our cache. And view our item. All right, so as we can see, it's starting to look a little more like our finished product here. We've got the rounded edges on our, on our text boxes here. The button style is updated on our select boxes. So one of the things that we need to do, though, is now that the box, the, the text box is a little bigger, we're going to need to go adjust the spacing a little bit because it's starting to get a little bit crowded. So what we can do is we can go ahead and close our part form, open up our part form. Yeah, and we'll see it's a, a little crowded. So we can just go ahead and scoot these guys down. Always work on that layout. Just a, a quick note: everything you're seeing here is all available to a, an, whether you're a subscriber or an open source source user. So this is something that you could uh, be building on your own if you're doing a proof of concept or, or you're you're a small business owner, something like that. And of course, our our largest subscribers can can do the same thing. So this is uh, not magic that you have to uh, to get extra licenses for or anything like that. Alrighty, so we went and, uh, and shifted these around a little bit. Alrighty, and I believe there is a known issue 
with these fields. It looks good on the form, but it's not rendering quite right on the part form here. I believe there's a known issue for that. It might not be filed on the page, um, or it might be a result of a style that we haven't applied yet. So uh, I'll keep an eye on that as we go. We can see here that the, uh, the other CSS that I grabbed in here for the owned by, managed by, and the calendar, um, this also updated these fields in here. So this is kind of a two-step process because we need to update the, you know, the, the text box, but then we also need to update the button. So we can see here that, um, so updating a field with a, uh, a custom button. So we can go ahead and we can, we can grab the, the different classes that are used by default and then we can replace them with our custom classes. Alrighty, so that takes care of a lot of the styles that we were looking at. Um, next thing up uh, is our classification specific icons. Um, so typically when you go to a part form, you get the part icon every single time, no matter what class the item is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a new HTML field called custom icon. All right, and then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put an image in here. And right now it's just got a, uh, a hard-coded URL um, for the source. Uh, but that's going to be overwritten by some logic that we have defined here in our method. So we have uh, our choose icon function here. So I'm just going to blaze through this real quick. But it essentially goes and it looks at the context item it takes a look at the classification and then it goes and it decides which of these files should be displayed. Uh, it hides the default icon and then it displays the one that we've created. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save that. And then we're also going to need to add a new uh, ID based style. in our CSS form here. Clear our cache. Um, and for anybody who's wondering the hotkeys that I'm using, it's control shift delete um, to pull up the, the deleting the cache without logging out. And uh, we can see it's, it's loading the right style here. But one of the things I forgot to do is I forgot to go ahead and put that where we want it to go. And then we also need to remove the field label on that. Alrighty, so how are we doing on time, Dave? We're pretty much up. But okay. Do we have any questions <coughs> from anybody? Well, we got I, a couple. Uh, I think what you had left to do okay. is it, a lot of the styling, getting that icon in the yeah, right spot. Yeah, yeah. It's really a lot about uh, you know tweaking tweaking things and getting everything just right the way that you like them, um, depending on your depending on your form. Why don't we show them the, the last two slides because you had a lot of the info. Um, okay, that's right. And we can always help them out through the forums or contacting us directly. Yeah. If you wanted to apply this specifically to your to your instance. Yeah. So uh, so this is just kind of a a rundown of some resources that are handy. So like I mentioned, this is where the code is. Uh, you can also find it through our community site. I wrote a couple blog posts on on all of the steps that are in here. They're based on an earlier version of this project, but they still work. Um, I just did some refactoring since the the blog posts were written. Good and engineer, he never you know can never leave <laughs> things alone. Always have to tweak it. <laughs> what is it? Better is the enemy of good. Yeah, right. <laughs>
And then uh, I also mentioned the uh, the icons. Shout out to GitHub. Uh, I love using their icons in all my projects. And then there's a couple other other projects out there for customizing forms. And then just various community links. So the homepage, uh, our projects, uh, the forums. If you have any sort of questions um, about projects or about the product or about troubleshooting you know it's it's not a it's not a replacement for our support team you know they're they're the best I say with my my biases have <laughs> after spending two years on the sport team but uh, <laughs> but um, but it's definitely a good way to connect with the rest of the community and um, you know get ideas out there and yep. and you know uh, share ideas and knowledge and speaking of knowledge, uh, there's also the knowledge base. Dave, I don't know if you want to talk about um, knowledge base articles at all. Yeah, so we've been uh, collecting knowledge base articles uh, from both internal ARIS folks, uh, from partners, and also from community members. Uh, at our recent conference at, at ACE in Nashville, we had a few uh, articles contributed directly by our, our users. So there's always a call out to you guys as you learn neat things, share it with the community, share it with your peers. Um, it's it's always best, in my opinion, to learn from your peers because all of you guys deal with the real world out in the wild every day. And, and you know, it, I, I, we got a lot of sharp people here at Aris, uh, but, you know, we never know the nuance of all the specific industries. So you guys can really help us bring the community together. So put that knowledge in there. It can be as simple as, you know, how to change an icon or how to style something very simply or, or something as large that, that turns into a, a community project. So that's uh, one of the very unique things that, that we offer here. So I got a couple questions here. I'll try and answer real quick. Andrew asks uh, on creation of a new field, does it create a column in the table? I don't think it creates a column, but it'll insert it. You have to locate it. As as far as the the data model, um, if you want to create a new column in your table, as far as your data model, you're going to need to create a new property on your item type. Um, the, the item type that's associated with your form. Uh, and then if you want that uh, property to have a field on your form, you can create the field and set the data source uh, to that property. Um, so creating a field itself isn't going to add anything to your data model. It's just going to create unrelated interface on your, on your form. Yeah, you got to make the connection. Yep. Uh, the other question I've got here is, can the images be PNG instead of SVG, uh, and is there an advantage? I think we, we always want to err people to SVG. It's a scalable file, a vector versus a, a, a bitmap or a raster, but any other? Yeah, they, cer they certainly can be uh, PNGs. I used SVGs um, for the scalability and because um, that's, what, that's what a lot of the icons that you'll find are built as they're um, in SVG format. Uh, so that's that's why I end up going with that. But there's no reason you can't use PNG. Yeah, and the great thing is, you know, with the the way the flexibility, go and try it out for your use. PNGs might be the best thing. Um, so um, give it a shot. Um, I guess we'll end it with, uh, of course, go online aris.com slash demo series to to check out our other demos. Check out our schedule upcoming. Uh, we've got uh, one upcoming. I'm going to do a modeling 101, help you through how to kind of take a basic approach. How do I create a new item? and create some new properties very very simple and we'll uh, have the ongoing items up there and like we said when uh, when we get this um, post process the video here you'll get an email from us so you can go check it out and share it with all your friends your family uh, that'll be I'm sure they'll be enthralled um, but with that I think we will call it a day we thank you very much for joining us and um, we hope to see you or, or, or see you online at any rate and and, uh, and always come hopefully we'll see you at our events so thanks much Take care and everyone have a good day.